Good morning. Welcome. This is, uh, my name is Minister Karen Woodruff. I come to you today from Focus 3 Church, where Pastor um, Elvin Woodruff III, he is the pastor. Also, if you would like, if you don't have a church home, you can come and join us on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. We're online right now, virtually, but our address is 735 Argo Avenue. That is in Madison, Tennessee, and the zip code is 37115. Welcome this morning. Um, I give honor, first give honor, praises, and glory to God, who is truly the head of my life, to Pastor Woodruff, for, and I thank him for allowing me to um, preach this morning, to our uh, Elder Woodruff, who is also a minister at our church, and to all our church family, we want to just say we love you all, and we hope you are here with us this morning, listening and joining in. Also, before we get started, I wanted to tell you about the Sunday school class. We have a Sunday school class for our children, and it starts at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning, and it's on Zoom. We had a great lesson this morning. We are going through the Bible. We're going to go through Genesis all the way to Re the book of Revelation, and we're going to be learning and the and the we're going to be breaking it down to where our children can learn it and understand what the word of God for themselves because I believe that the word of God is for them as well and they need it just as much as we do. So also I uh, just wanted to say that and also uh, we're going to be learning the books of the Bible. So we're going to have like little contests and different things going on. So if you would like for your child to join uh, Sunday school and also it is uh, the link will be on our website. Focus three, focus dot dot three, focus dash three dot o r g. Okay, focus dash three dot o r g. Also, we are on Facebook, and we are also on YouTube. So join us anytime. You can go back and, and listen to our wonderful past uh, sermons and just enjoy. Also, I wanted to mention that last Friday was our pastor's uh, birthday. So we want to say happy birthday to Pastor Woodruff, and we, we thank him. We, 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 want, we thank God for him. He is a great pastor. Also, we have members who have been sick or who have had surgery. We want to keep them in prayer as well. Um, I don't want to mention their name on, on Facebook, but uh, our members who have had surgery, we want to say that we, we are praying for you, and we want God to continue to bless you. And we know that your healing is coming, and we thank you for being a part of our church. Thank you, Sister Tara Williams, uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you for everyone else who is on our Facebook page this morning. We appreciate you. So, we're going to start off in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to see another day that you have created. We know that there will be another day. There will not be another day like this one. We ask that you bless all of the listeners today. And I, I, I believe that you have a word for your people today. There are some struggles and some trials and tribulations that people are going through in this life, but we know that we can count it all joy because we know that you are in control. So we want to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing. We ask that you op open our hearts and minds so that we can hear from you. This is not about me, Lord. This is all about you speaking to your people through me because I am just a vessel. I thank you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So we're going to get started with our word this morning. It's not very long, but I promise you there's a message in this word for you. So we're going to be coming from the book of James, the first chapter, beginning at verse 2. And the title of our message this morning is Count It All Joy. Okay, it's called Count It All Joy. And the scripture reads, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. 
For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So we're going to talk about this morning the joy of the Lord. So I was thinking about when I was right, when I was preparing the sermon, I was thinking about the cold. And, you know, last week it was, it was, it was cold outside here in Tennessee and the wind was blowing and the wind we were outside and the wind kind of made it, made, made it blow to where it was just really like a bone chilling cold to me. I don't know about you, but I get pretty cold. And I was thinking about how, how God works in the, in the cold and in the wind. So cold winds can be bitter and it can be harsh, but they are necessary in order to grow and develop certain things. They are necessary to grow and develop certain things. For example, farmers do not harvest oranges or grapefruit until after the first cold snap so that their taste reaches maximum sweetness. So farmers use the cold to uh, develop and grow sweet fruits. The first chapter in the book of James also tells us to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations. The Holy Spirit, who is the wind, allows difficulties to come into our lives. And why does he do that? So that we can be used by God to help someone else who is going through the exact same hurt uh, that we are experiencing. So know that what you are going through is not about you. Yeah, you're going through it, but you will be able to help someone else when you go through it. And that is the key. You're going through it. You're not sitting in it forever. You're going to go through it. First, uh, the second Corinthians, uh, the first, first Corinthians, the first chapter, verses three through four says, all praise to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our merciful father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our thoughts, in all our troubles, so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. We are called on at times to endure hardness for the Lord. Yet all the while, we are growing spiritually, even if we don't realize it. So we are growing spiritually, even in our trial. We may not see the growth, we may not feel the growth, and it may be a hard thing that we're dealing with. But know that there is a purpose for what you are dealing with. The winds will come. The winds will come. They will come. And when they do, that's the time to fast and pray, knowing and believing that he will indeed bring you through. So when you're going through your trials, know that you keep fasting and keep praying and asking God for help. He'll see you through it. Romans 8 and 15 says, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful, slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must share his suffering. I want you to always know that the Father, that the Father's hand is continually at work in our lives. God is molding you into his image. We should never allow our problems and our trials of life to cause us to quit on God. So let me tell you something. When you are going through trials and tribulations in life, and things get so hard and you don't see a way. How many am I talking to? I've been there, so I know what I'm talking about. When you're going through trials and you're going through the tribulations of life, sometimes you have to get by yourself. And sometimes you have to pray. And you have to remind yourself who you are in Christ. Sometimes you have to get away from everybody 
Sometimes you even have to have to sit in your car. I know we're in a pandemic right now and everybody's in the house and you may not have any privacy right now, but sometimes sit in your car or somewhere where you can get by yourself and and pray and know and and, and, t- and let remind yourself who you are in Christ. Because sometimes we need a reminder because things get so hectic in this life. Things, people and things just tearing us and wearing us and, 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 and pulling at us. 24 7 that sometimes we need to get by ourselves and remind ourselves who are, who we are we are fearfully and wonderfully made in god in him i can do all things who give me strength keep reminding yourself who you are in your trouble in the midst of all the pain and the things that you're dealing with in life you have to remind yourself that god is in control and no matter what it looks like he has an end to it it doesn't matter what it looks like god has an end to it you go in your secret place and go, and go in the closet or somewhere and remind yourself, I know who I am. I know who I am. I am a child of God. He has made me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Keep reminding yourself who God is in the midst of your trials, and I promise you, he will answer your prayers. Sometimes when you come out of your closet and you're done praying, you might not even, it might get worse because sometimes it does get worse. But that's the key. You can't give up. You have to know that you know in in your heart of hearts that God knows and he sees your situation and he will do something about it. Sometimes when you pray and you pray and you pray and you cry and you pray, things do get worse. But you have to know, know the word of God. That's why it's important to read the scripture and know who God is for yourself. So that when things come up, because sometimes you can you can say these positive things to yourself and then you'll have a negative thought. You'll say the positive thing and you'll have a negative thought. So you have to have the word inside of you to let you know and to remind you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Oh, you can't do that. No, you don't have you, you don't have enough education to do that. You don't have enough strength to do that. Greater is he that is in me, because I know what the Bible says. The Bible is a living word of God. And in him, we can do all things. And it doesn't matter what you're going through. With God, all things are possible. So keep that in mind when you're going through, that God is able to take care of you no matter what situation you're in. Never allow your problems and the trials of life to cause you to quit on God. We are so afraid to go through trouble, yet in them, his power and his presence will be felt. It is better to come through our trials, better understanding their purpose, and know that there is a lesson in what we are going through. So every time we go through something, there is a lesson for us. And it is a testimony for somebody else. Every time we go through something in this life, it brings us closer to God because it keeps us on our knees. It keeps us praying to God. And there is a lesson that we are to learn in that trial. I don't know what the lesson may be. You may not know what it may be. But in the end, you will know why you went through what you went through. And in the end of the trial and the tribulation, you will know that God is indeed real because he brought you through this situation and he'll bring you through all the others. So in the midst of your trials, count it all joy that God is able to do everything that he says he, he will do. We can praise him in the midst of what we're dealing with. Praise him in the midst of this pandemic. Yes, we have sick loved ones and we have lost our some lost jobs and we're working on housing, everything. But count it all joy. I can still praise God in the midst of. I remember reading the book of Job and I was thinking about Job and how he lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his health. His health was going because he had the, the boils on him and he lost his finances. His friends turned their backs on him and his wife told him to curse God and die. What did Job do? Job kept praising God in the midst of his trials. Job did not give up on God. Even though things was hard for him, yes, he mourned. Yes, he rent his clothes. He tore his clothes because he was in mourning, because he was dealing with in the flesh, dealing with his family being God and the things that he lost. But yes, Job still praised God in the midst of what he was going through. And in the end of that trial and tribulation that Job dealt with, God gave him double for everything that he had gone through. Imagine if Job had just gave in and just went ahead and just uh, not trusted God at all. We don't know what what would have happened to Job, but he wouldn't have gained the things that he had lost 
in the first place and he got double for his trouble. Nothing will change your circumstances faster than changing your attitude about your circumstances. Know that this too shall pass. It doesn't matter what it looks like. We're not going to go through this thing forever. And greater is he that is in me. Yes, I'm going to cry about it. Yes, I'm going to pray about it. And I know God is able to see me through it. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but God is able to see you through whatever it is that you're dealing with. I don't know what your trial is, but God is able to see you through it. You got to know who you are. You are a king and a queen in God. And in him, you move and you have your being. So greater is he that is in you because the Holy Ghost lives in you and he will get you through. We must listen for God and get an answer from him because he has all the answers to what we need. If we really believe what the Bible says, we will shout when hard times come around. If we believe what the Bible says, believe it. Know that it's real. Know that the living word is real. And there is an answer for every situation that we are facing in this life. There is an answer for everything that we deal with in this life. Because we would not know, because we would know that God is about to do something big in our lives. Know that your trials are not for, it's not for nothing. Know that it's not for nothing. Know that what you face in this life will grow you closer to God. There is a lesson in it. There's a testimony in it for someone else to help them. And God has something planned for your life. He cannot bring your purpose through in you until he, you, he grows you and develops you for what he has for you to do. So sometimes, yes, trials are necessary. They are necessary. And you will get through them. When you get to a place where you are down and you have no idea what to do, remember to pray. And some people say that praying is not, you just pray and you get up and you leave. No, you pray and you wait for your answer. You pray and you wait for God to answer you because you know God is going to answer you. He has seen you through so many different things in this life and he will continue to see you through. As long as you keep your faith and your trust in God, he will see you through it. I want to encourage you to praise your way through hard times. Praise your way through it. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Yes, it's hard, but I'm going to still keep praising God. Tears may be coming down my face, but I'm thanking God for this day and everything that he has brought me through. Know that with it, when it's over, you will know and trust God in a way that you have never trusted him before. And everything that we go through brings us closer to him. You will know him like you have never known him before when you go through trials because you pray like you never prayed before because things happen and we don't know how to fix it, but we have with God has an answer. So I want to, I want to encourage you today to praise your way through. Count it all joy when things are happening because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. And you can face every trial in this life. You can face it because the strength of God lives in you. He is your strength. And if you need help, please reach out to the church. We are here for you. We are here for you. If there's anyone out there who is sick, we are happy to pray for you. If there's anyone out there that just needs to talk, to have a, a conversation or just a release and talk about the things that you're dealing with, call the church. We are here to help you. So if there's anyone out here today who wants to give your life to Christ, if you don't know him, now is the time because tomorrow is not promised. We're going through so many things in this life, we don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen. I want to say, just bow your head if you want to give your life to Christ. I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of my sins. By faith, I believe that you have washed my sins away, that you died on the cross to save me, 
and I believe in your word. If you said these things and you've given your life to Christ, find you a church to go to that teaches the word of God. Find somewhere to go to, that teaches the word of God. And also, you're welcome to come to Focus 3 Church. May God bless each and every one of you. Amen.